Morning. So the plans changed. <laughs> again. Uh, yeah, again. <laughs> Um, we were going to do the Aylesbury Arm and we still are going to do that at some point um, but with Elliot's sore ribs and we did a lot yesterday, we had a much longer day than we, we'd planned on doing, we did nine locks yesterday so um, I feel a little bit tired, not, not tired like I want to go to sleep but sort of physically tired um, so we need to go back to... <laughs> tell you about that in a minute. Uh, we need to go back to Milton Keynes uh, this afternoon. Yeah. Basically, basically at some point over the next week we need to be in Milton Keynes and today just feels like ready the pheasant. Feels like the, the right day. We want a quieter day. I had a sneezing fit in the night which given that once I'm in a position say on my back it takes me a little bit of effort <laughs> to be anything other than flat on my back. When this sneezing fit hit, um, I was in the wrong place. My chest this morning, oh God, it's so sore. So we are just gonna have a, the choir today that we've always been, that we've been promising, promising ourselves for a while. And the thought of doing that lot. Yeah, we've still got is, six locks to do, to be fair. We have. Um, so what we were going to do is go down the Grand Union, then across the Ellsbury Arm, which is... About six miles and 16 locks, we think. Obviously each way, because it's an arm. It's not circular, so you go and then do that coming back. Um, another plane? Um, it's just too much, isn't it? So the way I'm feeling, and you, you want to quiet today as well, don't you? So. We've said what we'll do is we'll go down to Tring instead. We'll basically carry on down the Grand Union Canal to Tring, which has a train station with direct trains to Milton Keynes, 20 odd minutes. So that, that whole thing just makes life a bit easier, doesn't it? And there are services um, either side of the train station at Tring for water and Elsan and all that sort of good stuff. So. <laughs> So that's the plan, anyway. That's the plan, isn't we'll it? Well, that's the current plan, but we'll see. We'll see um, what happens as the day uh, progresses. As the day progresses, um, yeah. See how much news, pain you're in. Yeah. On good news, my trainers have survived, <laughs> which is astonishing, really, given. No, they don't smell as bad as your clothes. No, I did. I gave them a good sniff. If anything, they were fresher than they were before <laughs> we went in. <laughs> Says a lot for your feet. Yeah. Um, wake up call today was at 5 a.m and it sounded like that. A gunshot? Yeah, so the fake gunshots um, started at 5am and have been going on ever since. Every 11 minutes we reckon. Mm. So, yeah. I don't think anyone's staying on these boats in front of us. Not seen anybody, have no, we? No, no, really. we saw nobody last night. We saw people along the towpath, didn't we? But nobody, no boaty people. And I took a two minute wander up the um, towpath this morning. And yeah, saw nobody and just evidence of boats being moored there for a while, so. Are we ready to fire up then? How long have we got till the first lock? Less than a mile, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, less than a mile. Less than a mile to our first lock. So yeah, anyway, that's that's um that's the plan and hopefully Despite the fact we're not going to be doing massive mileage today, there'll still be plenty to, to see and record and share with you guys. So that's the plan. See you later. That's right for now. Yeah. Drapes over that uh, window. Stunning. Difficult to miss a wide beam painted in that colour coming the other way, you'd know about that, wouldn't you?
This looks a bit of a shame at the roadside, all broken windows and boarded up. So on this lock we've got a broken gate paddle here and then at the other side a very leaky lock gate so we can only remove half of the water well we can remove all of the water half as quickly and then at the other end it's coming in so it just takes a little longer to drain that's all My angel just checking on proceedings, making sure everything's tickety-boo. Oh, she's been ambitious today. Huh? I thought you were going to try and push the thing open. Yeah, good luck with that. Not quite. Number one, I'll get back to the boat, I think. Hello, dear. Glad you did. 1914. Hello, hello. A lot of gates uh, here are wider. The gap I've got. Usually there's practically no gap at all. So yeah, that's quite generous. Actually, we talk about leaky lock gates, but um, here's a here's a graphic example. Uh, you know, water will just come out of there no matter what. So the top bit, it's much watertight. Plenty of opportunity for water to escape there. So I was thinking this gate is super heavy. Am I just really tired? I got it open and then saw this appears to be like concrete <laughs> and it does go right down to the bottom. I had a look underneath and it's concrete right down to the bottom. Wow. So, I well, suppose they, once you've got it moving. I mean they have to be heavy don't they but so maybe all the... I don't know if that's where the weight is though is it because that's just your leverage point so... The weight's there, isn't it, on that side? We're not to balance it with heaviness here, though. I don't know. I don't really do physics. No. Uh, oh, well, there you go. Anyway, that's, uh... I don't know if that's why that one is feeling super heavy, but... Water's edge at Marsworth. Is it a pub or something? Coffee place. Alright. You'd thought there'd be a little sign here, wouldn't you? Even if it was only a little uh, swing sign saying, come and have a overpriced artisan coffee here. I thought when we watched it, I thought maybe it was like. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that. number 40 against us again it's not entirely full so I suspect it's just been leaking a bit there's a reservoir just behind us it's got to, I've got to say as tempting as it is to just go no I'm absolutely fine I've, I do feel like a bit of a wreck today so going to do as I'm told for once. For Stuart Stevenson, 1996. Do not fall in, do not fall in. It's a bit windy up here.
Is that an arctic turn, my angel? <laughs> To right as you're, as you're looking at that. So we'll see how he does. It's a bit boss, wasn't it? That was a bit boss. So not content with doing locks and all sorts. My angel is now litter picking. Other people's litter up. No, I think it's some sort of piece of the lock. We shit on your toothbrush. Oh, is that some Jehovah's Witness book or something that they're, uh, what is it? Christmas Carol. Oh, Charles Dickens. There's a lot of water coming out of there. It's a full lock handsome. An infinity pool from up there, I guess. Right, leaving Josh and Elliot down there with. Two lovely CRT volunteers who are going to sort this lock out and so that I can uh, go on up and get this one ready. That'll speed progress somewhat. So, let's see what we can do up here. So, gate open, it's the waiting Josh's arrival, and down there. I think that's the first lock that we've been at, but we've done absolutely nothing ourselves to get through it. Could get used to that. No, not really, it's, it's all part of the experience. And I'm using it as an opportunity to uh, get some exercise that I wouldn't otherwise be getting. So better than I was contemplating going back to the gym, but we bought a canal boat instead. So, got to say, having the CRT guys here is a huge help. We've got a flight of seven and. Helpful CRT chaps, just nip down to say that he's already done this one. So that's fab news. Nice little place here. Miles with top lock. house this one. This is the Wendover arm which we're going to be doing 
probably tomorrow and carry on down to Tring ish catch a train it's Milton Keynes so I'm not quite sure how long all that's going to take and then come back head back and through here 55 miles to Bronston 38 to Brentford and 6 to Wendover <laughs> Just saying, that's all. I thought there was only one lucky lady. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that <laughs> was me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. 
supporting things for its platform, yeah? Like I say, if it's permanent, I don't suppose it matters, does it? Farmer burning his stuff in the field would be a... Uh, Make everything on your boat smell that, won't it? Yeah. So, how do they get to more the permanent one? On the top, is, is that... CRT don't catch you, then you sort it, aren't you? <gasps> Jack Dora Crow. It's a crow, isn't it? Sure, Jack Dora's not have like the black caps. Mm. Yeah, they do. I think that's right. the difference. I don't know anything about birds. <laughs> I thought I said this one would make an ornithologist of something. There you go. And he said it sounds painful. <laughs> <laughs> another one. That's so cool. Right, we're from another planet. Aren't we? <laughs> oh, he's brilliant. What even is it? It's a large boat, isn't it? What's your cool name? Just when you thought you'd heard every name possible, eh? Lovely <laughs> <laughs> looking boat. Cool name, you see it? Truly scrumptious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you yeah, it's collecting data from NASA or something. <laughs> it's a Russian spy boat. Vehicle. Vehicle. <laughs> I, I joke, but actually, look what the boat's called. <laughs> yeah. Exactly as good as a U boat, is it, for being sly? Are their boats called U boats? No, that was a Germans. German thing, wasn't it? It's cool, isn't it? Ramp for your woofer or whatever. There we go. After what feels like three weeks. Two days. There's Josh in the. It does feel like a long time since we left him. Yeah. But it's six o'clock. Yeah. So there's Josh, my angel, and a duck. And there is a tyre. Dear, oh dear. Right, Mr. Duck. See them in the air there. Right, so got rid of the tyre. Well, I've fished the tyre out of the canal. To be honest, it looks like it's been in there for a good while. Judging by all the slime on it. Um yeah, so good deed done. Shouldn't have been in there in the first place, of course. Some class A peasantry, no doubt. Because occasionally you see boats using tyres as fenders, but they tend to use like scooter or motorbike tyres because they're relatively small and light. That is really heavy, so that's, I don't know, whatever that is, like a Land Rover tyre or something. It's, um, yeah, so no one's using that as a fender, surely. Anyway, it has meant further wetness to my... What were my dry shoes? Um, so yeah, what's the sit rep for the day? I'll be honest, I feel like an absolute wreck. My ribs and chest are just so sore and I don't like to moan. And I'm not looking for sympathy, 
But I would, yeah, anyway, I was trying to do a good thing, a good deed, and all that really happened is I've broken myself. So chatting to various people, telling me exactly, I suppose, what I already knew from my previous accidents, which are, there's nothing you can do with ribs, it just takes time, up to six weeks, blah de blah de blah take it easy. And that's fine, but I feel, kind of feel a bit guilty, like we've, we've just walked up the towpath with a shopping bag with stuff in it and Sue's carrying the shopping bag and she's knackered from yesterday's locks and all the rest of it and I'm just sort of hobbling up the towpath behind her yeah that's kind of well in my head that's my job and she's having to sort of take that on a night tonight the reason I'm doing this discussion and she's not here with me she's starting to feel a cold coming on and I said look just get yourself sorted and comfortable don't worry about yeah i'll do it and i mean we're a team we're a team but uh yeah i don't feel like i'm pulling my weight actually at the minute but yeah i'd start yeah anyway right i'm gonna stop moaning about my ribs it's, it is what it is um so anyway we've got first world problems look where we are Oh no, I feel a sneeze coming on. Stick my fingers up my nose. Um, yeah, we're here together, chilling out on, chilling out, I'm gonna try and chill out on Narrowboat Josh. It's been a sunny day, it's been a nice day. It's been good to see the CRT crew out actually doing their, uh, doing their bit, and I don't mean that as in an obligation, but just that, you know, the guys and girls of the CRT don't do it because they have to. Um, the trust has to, it has an obligation to boaters, but the volunteers do it because they want to help. Ducks, seen our first mandarin duck. This is what happens, because none of this is scripted. I just get, who's that, is that Billy? Digging on the towpath. Um, so yeah, big up the CRT people. They were out helping today, which was a help, um, particularly given our situation. Oh, look at them. Anyone else fancy the chances? Just come into the uh, boat. <laughs> it's only me, dear. <laughs> Just come into the boat to the sound of crack, crack, crack. So like, okay, I think that's the executioner out. <laughs> Yes, two. Yeah, there's a mad redhead wielding an electronic killing device. <laughs> so here we were just when we thought the evening entertainment was over. Look how close they are to the boat, they're just yeah. dead Some cool. Aren't they? ducks. They're normally a bit scared, more scared, aren't they? Yeah. Do you think he's holding back while she gets fed? Because he's not really going for that food, is he? Proper, aren't they? Some of them being purple, haven't they? Oh, what's she doing? Oh, oh, oh. Right, it's alright, I'll edit out the dead dogs. <laughs> this is proper. Tomorrow, Sue's suppers. What, what are we having? <laughs> oh, we're this having is duck. Stuff. <laughs> this is proper stuff. This is proper stuff, so yeah. I'm Roast duck. <laughs> <laughs> 